After losing all three games last episode, we sit just above the relegation zone on 12 points. So we're going back to base 6 with a 4-3-3 default Gigan Press to see if we can turn things around. It gives us a solid baseline that we can then make some tweaks to, but it did get us a draw at home against 4th place Lens, which was a nice start. Brea Moreno then scored a vital 90th minute winner away against Toulouse, which secured our first three points in a month and a half. Next up was bottom of the table Brest, where I was feeling confident after the recent results. And whilst we did take the lead in the first half, we couldn't finish our chances in the second, as we let Brest pull one back for a 1-1 draw. Leon and Marseille were going to be much more difficult opponents. But despite Leon taking the lead, Pablo Martinez scored on his return from a sick week injury to earn us a very important draw. It's just as well he's back as we've now lost Cobra for six weeks, as well as Belic and Estevez for the next match with yellow card suspensions, which ended up being our only loss between episodes. So we head into the winter break, 13th place in the table and five points clear of the relegation zone. It also means the January transfer window is approaching and there is interest circulating around Etienne Green from Wolves and Leicester. With no good keepers projected in our youth intake preview, I want to hold on to Etienne this transfer window. But I also want to bring some players into the club and I'm willing to take a risk by not strengthening our first team to instead spend our remaining 3.5 million pound on young players for the future. Now I've been scouting young French players with high potential and I've created a shortlist here, currently with 31 players on it, that I think could be decent if we brought them into the club. They're all between the ages of 17 and 21. And the idea would be to bring them in, put them in the second team or loan them out. And eventually in the next season or the season after, bring them into the first team. I've got it sorted by potential ability. A lot of players here have got five star potential. These top three are the very best, but as you can see from their price, they are a little bit expensive for us right now. But there is some value to be found in this list. And I think bringing in 18 year old Elias from Real Madrid would be a nice touch. Hat's got French nationality, but is currently playing for the Algeria under 20s. Can operate as a centre back very well with 15 heading and 17 jumping reach. However, I think he might be more suited to being a left inverted fullback, which is the position that we want to try and use going forward in this series. Looking at this, obviously, we'll need some work, but I think he does have the makings for it. The best part about it is that he's in Spain right now at Real Madrid, which means he has got a release fee clause of £350,000. And he also just happens to be the son of Zinedine Zidane which is quite a nice bonus. So it's currently the 16th of December, a little while to go until January, but it'd be nice to try and get some moves done ready for the first. So let's put a bid of £350,000 in, suggest the terms, finalise the deal, get it done. The next player I want to look at is another left-footed centre-back. Bastian is looking really solid, a much more developed version of Elias at 18 years old, but as a result, will be more expensive. I think we could train him up to be a libero on support. He has good dribbling first touch for that sort of position but also as a ball playing defender on defend get the passing up a little bit and I think he's solid obviously not for our first team just yet but at 18 years old we loan him out and get him good the issue is he's going to be between 110,000 pounds and 5.8 million so there's a good chance we might not have the budget right now to get him if we just suggest a million pounds right what do they come back with uh, they come back with 40% profit from next sale as well as 2.5 up front and 2.2 down the line which doesn't quite see <sighs> a lot of money. I also don't like this profit on next sale. I think we cancel this deal and come back in again with this gone. And then the third player that I want to look to bring in is this guy, Marius Korkul, which I think is maybe how you pronounce his surname. I think he could be quite a good defensive midfielder for us, and more, more of a defensive role, I suppose, than the actual defensive midfielder. Something like a Carolero we've got highlighted right here. I think the attributes work out quite nicely, although we would need to improve his mental attributes. Ball winning defender as well. He's got some good attributes there. Marking needs to be up a little bit. But the good thing is, he's only 17 years old right now, so we can improve him. His value is between 100 30,000 pounds and 1.3 million. Although talking to his agent, he doesn't actually want to join us. Look, I think we just put a bid of half a million pounds down and they come back and say they want 1.3 total. And again, we want to get rid of that profit from next sale, so we'll come back in tomorrow. Before that though, Elias's contract. Let's try and sort this one out then with him before Real Madrid try and sell him somewhere else. Future prospect, breakthrough prospect, fringe player, absolutely perfect development for him. Full time, 3,000 pounds a week. Gets get rid of that yearly wage rise and the ways for him to make money in the future, which might mean putting his wage up to 3.5K per week to sort of balance that out a little bit. But if we suggest that, he signs immediately. Marius, transfer, make an offer. Let's go for 750,000 pounds. Also, profit from next sale, remove and exclude. Suggest they want a million. How about 850? 
and they want, they're not going to really budge from this, are they? 900, how about that? They accept 900. As for Bastion transfer make an offer, we're going to have to go bigger with this one, aren't we? The issue is we're going to do like 1.5 million up front, maybe. And then profit from the next sale, remove and exclude. And let's add in some installments over the next three years for 1.5 million. Do they like that? They do. I was expecting a lot more pushback on that. Now, frustratingly, Marius just won't even give us the time of day. Please talk to us. I will promise you we'll give you a better contract you've got at Angers and we can give you better development as well. We'll come back in for him later on. As for Bastion though, well, he's very interested in negotiating terms with us. Wants to be seen as a fringe player. I think Breakthrough Prospect is better. Can we suggest that? And he, he wants fringe. Well, you're probably going to get on loan anyway. So, you know... Oh, fine. He wants about five grand a week, which is reasonable, I suppose. He's a fairly decent player for 18 years old, but I need to get rid of the yearly wage rise of 10% and the future wage it rises with games. So maybe actually we go to 6k per week on a four-year deal, a one-year extension after playing 10 games in the final season. He's put that in himself. That's fine. And relegation release fee clause, we can't get rid of it. Let's leave it at 7.5 million. Suggest... He wants 7.5k a week. Well, can we go 6.25? Can we do that? 6.7, meet in the middle at 6.5. Lads, he's gone orange, which means if I change it and he doesn't like it, he'll just cancel it. So let's just accept it. It's £250 a week. But I think he will be very, very good in the future. At least I hope he will be for £3 million. It's the most we would have spent on a player. Oh, for goodness sake, Elias has just agreed a new contract with Real Madrid instead. Release fee clause only £425,000 though. So maybe in summer we come back for him. I guess Real Madrid might develop him better than we could right now. But basically today I've uh, wasted all your time by saying let's bring in these youth players. One signs a new contract. One decides he's not going to actually sign for us at all because he doesn't want to talk contracts with us. But Bastian has decided to join us, which is wonderful. Although it is for £3 million. It's a lot. But I have a lot of faith in this guy. He's tall, great jumping reach, great heading. He's relatively, his pace could be a bit higher to be fair, but mentors are very, very good for 18 years old. And I think he does have the attributes to play a few different roles, particularly that libero role that we quite like. Oh, wow, he's already joined us. What? what? Oh, it's the Joker transfer window. So every single season in France, you can make one signing outside of a transfer window from another team in France. So I guess this counts as our Joker transfer, which is fine because I didn't really plan on using it anyway. But it means he joins us immediately. So Benjamin, welcome him to the club, please. And I'll be honest, I want to loan you out immediately rather than actually play you. So uh, we'll wait till January to offer you out. Oh, for goodness sake. Bastian joins the club, is injured lifting weights in his first training session because he's trying to use his ego to show off to his new teammates out for 10 days. Now we do have a game in early January. It's Toulouse in the French Cup ninth round and then we've got basically the rest of January off until we play Montpellier. I presume we'll get some friendlies in there at some point. Oh, contracts running out for current players. Oh, we've got a lot of players with contracts running out at the end of the season. But I'll be honest, I think there's only two that I'd really want to keep and that's Batu Benzika and Ben Benjamin, maybe Caffaro as well, but he's been nowhere near as effective this season as he was last season. Dylan currently on £9,500 a week. Do you want to talk about it with us? Discuss contract with agents. We are keen. We're slightly keen. He wants twenty-one to £26,000 a week. And this is where we have to be realistic. Great player for us in season one, has been a solid player for us this year, but if we want to progress, we need better than him. And even though I'd love to keep him as a backup player, I don't want to spend £26,000 a week on my backup players. So can you reduce your wage demands? And they say yes, 19 to 23, that's still not low enough for me. I think we may be stall on this for a while. Benjamin, on the other hand, uh, we are slightly interested and he does not want to renew a new contract. Again, he's not sort of the player that I think we need to be using week in, week out as we progress, but would have been a handy backup. Now, despite not being in league de for half a year, I have just won manager of the year for the second division, which doesn't quite make sense to me. And interestingly, Koba has just won league on revelation of the year. What a great name that is, revelation of the year. Right, here come the bids for Etienne Green as we suspected they might. Now, he wants to join Newcastle United, obviously. I, I can understand that. Leicester loan offer, no. Let's just get rid of that completely to start off with. Newcastle. 
8.5 rising to 11.25. I'll be honest, I don't think it's enough. Particularly because he does have English nationality as well as French. And so, you know, the English tax has got to be paid up here. I really do not want to lose him. So... I'm just going to flat out refuse. He will get crossed and we'll talk to him. And here he is, not very happy. Let's discuss this with him then. And I'm just going to say the money wasn't enough. If someone comes in with an appropriate bid, yes, we'll talk about it. He says, what is a reasonable bid? So let's talk. Uh, he's suggesting 12.5. Now, this is. I thought he'd go a lot higher than this, if I'm honest with you. We need to fall out with him now because if we go and agree to 12.5, Newcastle will easily put 12.5 on the table. So I'm going to say, no, I want... 30 million for you. I'd accept, I well, probably wouldn't to be fair, but I'll say 30. He's not very happy. He wants 13.25. We are never going to agree to this. Uh, he wants 14. We are never going to agree to this. And there we go. It's broken down. His contract expires in 2028. We've got three years until that happens. Now, I've also tried to get Bastian out on loan and a whole bunch of clubs want to make an offer, but apparently he's got no interest in joining any of them, which is frustrating because he needs that game time elsewhere. There have been bids though for Karamoko Sankara. Now, if you remember, we brought this kid in uh, last season from Mimosas for £175,000, sent him out to Australia on loan where he didn't do very well. But this season, he is having a wonderful time scoring 13 goals in 14 appearances for our second team in the fourth division. Now, the limiting factor is here that we cannot get promoted from the fourth division. We are stuck here with our second team and he's good enough to be playing in the second division. So although I want him to do well and score goals, I think getting him out somewhere else is way better for him. And so Grenoble and Ajaxio have both made bids for him. Grenoble are currently ninth in the division and they've got some decent training facilities. Ajaxio are 17th and have some better facilities. But you know what? I think I'd rather have him playing in a team that's used to winning games as opposed to losing. So let's reject Ajaxio and we'll say yes to Grenoble. Before that happens, we have a French Cup game against Toulouse. And our players, actually back shot, this isn't too bad given it's winter break, but we should arrange some friendlies after this, I think. So now is your first chance to see this 4-3-3 Gigan Press on a video. And it has been working pretty well in between episodes. We've not been too clinical with our chance creation, but we are creating a lot of chances and Brea Moreno can slot one home there nice and early. One nil up. However, if we do get all the way to the quarters, semis, or the final, there's a good chance we're going to have to play against PSG. And I don't think we're good enough to be beating PSG yet. How is that a penalty? There's no way that was a penalty. I f he won the ball fair and square, and yet a penalty's been given to Toulouse, and Etienne Green can't save it. Oh, I'll tell you one player that I do want to sign, and it's Toulouse goalkeeper Restez. He is the... He's got the highest potential out of any goalkeeper in Football Manager this year, or at least the highest potential ability range. Uh, I think in some databases, his potential ability could be as high as 180, or it could be as low as 150. But if you do manage to get him in your game with 180 potential ability, that does make him pretty much the best keeper in the game if he can fulfill all of that potential ability, apart from regens that come through that could have higher potential abilities, obviously. So he would be a good one to get. He is also French. And actually, you know, if we're ever going to lose Etienne Green, he would be a good person to bring in. But I imagine he is very expensive. We'll check him out after this game as Batu Benzica right now. Obviously under a little pressure right now because he's obviously wanting a new contract. He's not getting Getting it, he's going to be frustrated about that. So we might not see the best performances out of him in the next few weeks or so. But again, he might put some good ones in to try and earn that contract. I think that shot took a whole load of deflections, but it has counted as Pablo Martinez's goal, and we have got ourselves in front in this game again. Let's watch the replay to actually work out what's happened here. So Benjamin turns, finds Belic, Belic turns, he finds Pablo Martinez. It actually comes off the noggin of this guy who helps it in. So I think it should be his own goal. Gonzalo Estevez, though, on the ball right now, finds Cafro. And if we can double our advantage here, which we can do, that puts us in a great position. Let's make some changes. Now, I have actually put our new signing on the bench. Let's give him some game time, shall we? And let's maybe play him instead of Vaclav at left centre back. Armes just come back from an injury as well. Let's bring him on for Mitrovic on the left-hand side. And Divine isn't getting much game time at the moment because Brea Moreno's been so good, so let's give him a run out now. This might be the best I've seen us play with this new formation that we're using. Uh, we haven't actually created as many chances as we have in other games. I think... I think we played Toulouse in between episodes. If it was the Toulouse game in between episodes, I think we had... No, it was Brest. It was the Brest game, wasn't it? We drew 1-1, but we had about 20 shots in that game and only scored one goal. So we can create a lot of chances. 
but we just don't seem to finish them. Today we have been finishing our chances, which is pretty good because Toulouse have just brought one back. The main thing is we are about to see this game out. 89 minutes, two minutes out of time. That's a win. We're in the hats for the next round. Good game from Cafaro there. One goal, one assist. I also want to try again for Marius. You know, he's now 18 years old. That extra birthday may have just made him more mature 900,000 pounds uh they're now at 1.1 million where's that come from so let's uh remove and exclude the profit from next sale let's make it a million pounds instead then suggest they're happy make the offer you see this time he now does want to talk to us i knew he'd change his mind i don't know why he's changed his mind but i knew <laughs> knew he would he wants fringe player uh can we go breakthrough prospect and maybe add a promise of we'll find a loan to assist player development suggest he wants fringe but he keeps but okay finalized promise negotiate the contract it's actually a very kind contract on 2.3k per week again we'll just get rid of all the future ways for him to make money and then up this to 2.7 thousand pounds a week suggest not what i expected he will be ours by the end of today's episode ah i also said we look at rest tes and he's valued at 46 to 57 million so uh, we won't be signing him anytime soon. Batu Binsika is now unhappy that the contract we've offered him has broken down. What are we going to do about it? Well, it's not my fault that you rejected the offer. So there we go, lad. He's just unhappy. My team, my rules, I'm afraid. And if you don't want to play by my rules, you can get out. Maybe we'll replace him with Jesus Vallejo, who's uh, got a transfer list at 1.1 million. The issue is £33,000 a week. He's not going to take a small contract here, is he? He is a lot better than Dylan Batu Binsika, though. Like, this will take our defence to the next level. Talking to his agent, he only wants twenty to 25000 a week, which is less than what Dylan Batu Binsika wants. Genuinely, this, this, look, can he bring the wage demands down a little bit? They can. Amazing. Right, I'm putting a bid in of 1.1 million right now. They accept it. He's got more interest in joining Valencia and a few other clubs in the Middle East. I understand that. But you can be a regular starter. You will teach you French. We're not going to improve the staff. I and mean, we will, but I don't want to promise you that because you might get unhappy with me. And um, we won't strengthen the midfield because, again, we, we could do that, but you won't be happy with it, maybe. So let's suggest those promises. He likes that. And the contract, oh, £20,000 a week. It's a lot, but for a player he, he, that is good as him... I think it's reasonable. If we accept that, we have to bring the appearance fee down to five grand a week. Bring the clean sheet to one. We won't get many of those. Suggest he won't like it, I don't think. Oh, he does. My word. We could have gone lower. Jesus, I bloody love you. Also, Bordeaux in the next round of the Cup. In the 19th of January, interestingly. Also, Sankara is going to out on loan to Grenoble. Wonderful. Oh, my word. Etienne Green has just handed in a formal transfer request because he wants to go to Newcastle. Feels like move's been blocked. I'll accept it, but I'm not going to accept bids for less than 30 million, lad. Also, Cafro and Batu Binsika are upset about not getting a new contract. Discuss the issue, just with Cafro, actually. He's the only one here who's bothered about it. He's asking for unreasonable things. And <laughs> this is what I quite like about this. Dylan Batu Binsika, now this is about him. And he's now saying, in the third person... He's done as much as he can to earn a new deal. What else is he meant to do? Dylan, you're talking about yourself here. For that, I kind of respect it. But also, it's a little bit of a weird, you know, complex you might have going on there. So actually, I'm going to dismiss this. I'm not going to tolerate this level of dissent from players. And now they're argumentative. And now I'm going to be negative and saying very disappointed with you all. And it's not looking good. Luckily, we can now replace Batu Binsika with Jesus Vallejo. Welcome. Oh, guys, give it a rest. Please give it a rest. Cafro and Batu Binsika, they are disruptive. You know, really, I'm glad their contracts are expiring at the end of the season. I cannot wait to get rid of you both. They want me to let Etienne Green leave the club. Why would I want to weaken our squad? Do you want that to happen? And uh, Batu Bin Secret says, yeah, fair enough. That, that makes sense. It does, doesn't it? Now the press are coming to me about Batu Bin Sika, saying he wants to force him to move away if he's not given an improved contract. I'm actually going to respond to this. You know what? I am keen to keep him and I want to thrash out a deal, but not for £30,000 a week. He's trying to cause a mutiny and it's not going to happen. Anyway, Bordeaux up next in the French Cup. Uh, I won't start him because it seems a bit harsh to put him straight into a team where he's not had any game time. So Batu Binsika will play annoyingly. The worst part about this is he's my captain. You know, he's meant to be my right hand. Maybe this is why he's upset with me because he is the captain and thinks I'm disrespecting him. 
So maybe I'm starting to see it from his perspective a little bit. However, have some self-awareness, lad. Why do you want £30,000 a week? First highlight of the game is in the 30th minute and we put a corner in the middle which has been cleared but Cafro uh, can just give the ball away. Again, you know, I'd rather play someone else than Cafro but he is the best right winger that we've got. And, and we're playing inside forwards at the moment and he, that does suit him quite well. Maybe Ahmed will come back into the team a little bit to replace him. Uh, that might be something we do but he's not as good as Cafro. So that's kind of what we're stuck with. Fontan brings the ball forwards though, our Spanish left back, and he finds Cafro, who can't win the header, but Pablo Martinez, another, right, how many Spanish players have we got actually? Because Pablo Martinez must make it at least six Spanish players now. But he is in the scoring mood since coming back from his injury, which is quite nice. And hopefully he can get another one from this resulting corner, which has just been cleared only as far as Marsa gives it to Koba. Koba back to Pablo Martinez, who finds the net again. Ah, injury to Stefan Mitrovic. Potential foot injury. Okay. Cafro has got a very strong... To be fair, actually, we're sort of playing him on the wrong side to be inside forward on the left hand, on the right hand side. So you swap over and then we bring Ahmed over who has got a left foot and he's got a right foot. So Ahmed should be on... Oh, jeez. Navarro's also got a right... Okay, well, Ahmed's got to play there then. But we'll see what he can do in that position. And if it's better than Cafaro, then, you know, we might swap them. But Cafaro in general has been pretty good in the past few games or so. So we'll see. Either way, Bordeaux trying to get themselves back in this game, hit the post and then score. Mm. So not a great end to the first half. However, if we can score another one right at the end just to give ourselves that buffer, I might forgive them. As Moreno has been put through by Cafaro, it's another assist for Cafaro. He's got to keep playing, hasn't he? Sometimes you just can't let personal vendettas get in the way of winning. Anyway, good first half. Well done. Keep it up. I think again, uh, with 60 minutes on the clock, what we'll do is we will change the back line a little bit. Let's give a debut to Jesus. Let's also bring Bastion on at left centre-back. So changing both our centre-backs over a little risky. But before the subs happen, there is a highlight which is uh, not going in our favour right now as Bordeaux bring it down this near side of the pitch. In the area, take the shot, hit the... That's frustrating. So let's make the subs and try and see the game out with 30 minutes to go. And now they've got another corner. Uh, the Bordeaux goal is coming. I know it's coming. I'm not going to put the blame on our sub centre backs there. You know, it was from a set piece. Off the training ground, nothing they could have done. Apart from, you know, mark the guy on the edge of the area. That, that could have helped. But with 10 minutes to go, we, we have to do something here. And it's Bordeaux once again coming forward right now and... This is deja vu from last season. I swear we got knocked out in a very similar fashion, dominating the game and then suddenly fell apart at the end. Go on then, make it f yeah. Who cares about the cup anyway? Oh, come on. No. The club are unhappy about my management of the team and the squad is lacking quality in squad depth. I mean, look at two new players have just signed, Bastian and Jesus, and they're siding with everyone else. Snakes. I can't believe the snake's here. I'm really let down by these two. I can't believe they've joined in this. Also, there's 16 players here talking to me, telling me there's no squad depth. Well, hang on. A lot of you guys are meant to be squad depth. So you're saying you're not good enough. Right, let's hash this one out then. Let's hash it out. Some players feel that the squad lacks quality in depth. Well, some of you are that depth. We could do with an additional player or two here. We've literally just signed two players for that depth. And those two players are complaining. Let's not risk ruining the positive atmosphere around the club. Forget about it and focus on your football. Oh God, that was never going to work. I don't know why I clicked that. The atmosphere isn't that good. You're trying to mask the fact you've dealt with this poorly and it's not going to work. Look, I'm going to apologise to them. Let's try and put it behind us and move on. And actually, they seem happy with that. How has that worked? Okay, productive meeting, and, and everyone looks pretty pleased, and morale has stayed the same. It was some, actually, Pablo Martinez has improved a little bit, and somehow managerial support has actually gone up. Somehow, well, that was positive. Right, you, transfer, make an offer, suggest they accept a million. Let's get this contract hashed out. This time, we are not losing you. Fringe player, and you know what? We'll add the promise in of finding a loan for him again because I do want to get him out on loan suggest he's happy right now let's just get rid of a yearly wage rise 
leave the other options in there. You know, he's not going to play 21st league games for us for a while yet. And in fact, if we try and up that to 30 instead, give him a little bit more money per week, he might like it. Suggest? Yes. Thank you. Always knew we'd get our man. Always knew we'd get him. A day before we play Montpellier, Vat Club out for two days, the tight calf, and a tight hamstring, Jesus Vallejo out for two days. I think they might be okay to play. But someone who also could play, but probably won't play, is Marius. He's joining the club. Uh, he's finally here. A million pounds from Angers. Please be as good as the scouts told me you were. Four and a half stars of potential, league unpotential, importantly. And I can certainly see him being that Carolero for us in the future, or maybe that ball winning midfielder in the future. However, for now, we need to get him out on loan, could be promised him that. And we will take on Montpellier. Now, Mitrovic is out for a couple of weeks here with his injury, another week actually, so he should be all right. But we'll move Cafaro over, and I think we'll bring on Ahmed on the other wing. Estevez will end up starting this game, Appiah on the bench. Same with Vaclav, same with uh, Brianson, and that's the team we'll go with. So Montpellier are in the relegation zone. They're 17th place right now, so this they, we have to win this game. This is one of those must win games this season, particularly being at home as well. You know, we should have the advantage. We should be the better team as long as we just don't lose. I, I, if a draw would be OK, but as, as long as we don't lose, that's the important part to all of this is Cafro has got a free kick. He's taking his time with this, which suggests to me it's going to go in the back of the net here as Cafro steps up. And it somehow has worked out. I was so confused by that. It goes down as an own goal in the end, not for Brea Moreno, unfortunately, but at least we take the lead. Where did it hit a player then? So Moreno, sh oh, it comes off the back of this guy. Okay, cool. And that sends us up to the dizzy height of 12th place. I have no idea what the players wanted when they said they wanted more squad depth. Look at how good we are. But it is a very narrow lead at halftime. Another goal here would really help us out. And Montpellier are wanting to start the second half off very strongly. They're coming forward right now with the first highlight from open play. Cafro, good, important interception, racing forward, maybe should have unleashed the pass a little earlier. Instead finds Belich edge of the area, who finishes for his first for the club. If I remember rightly, and I'm probably not remembering rightly, I think I don't think Belich was one of the players who complained about a lack of squad depth. However, I, there were 16, and I cannot remember all 16 of them, so I, I really have no idea. But I'm going to pretend, at least, that he, he didn't complain. And so he's now my favourite player. Based on that goal he literally just scored that I think anyone else could have scored. You know what? It doesn't matter. He's my favourite player. I'll check the footage when I'm editing. If he was in the mutiny, then, you know, maybe I will change my mind as Batu Benzika scores his first of the season. Wow. Bet you want a new contract for that, don't you? 3-0 up. Let's make a couple of changes. And I think once again, it's, it's a good chance to bring on Bastian and Jesus Vallejo to get them used to the team a little bit. Fontan, a little tired. Let's make three changes to the back line, Tom. Why not? And Kobe's a bit tired, so let's bring Benjamin on. Although swap him and Pablo over. As we approach the full-time whistle, we have picked up all three points. There's no way Montpellier are scoring three goals in the next four minutes. They might get one, though. It's annoying. Although on the plus side, we aren't paying out clean sheet bonuses. But that 3-1 win is incredibly important. There's my favourite player on his 8.1 rating. My word, today has been like a, a, a lesson in diplomacy. Probably like how, how not to be diplomatic, you know, really. Uh, I, I could have been better. But they have to remember this is a dictatorship. And that is the, the window done. Excellent. I think we've done pretty well, to be fair. Next up is Lorient or Lorien. Lorient, I think it is. They're in fifth place. So this will be a real challenge. Now, Cafaro is slightly injured. Uh, can play. I think we'll take Ahmed off for Navarro. Benjamin suspended, which isn't ideal, which means we'll bring... Uh, I guess Florian Tardé on to the bench. We are going to start Jesus Vallejo though instead of Batu Benzica. I want to start playing him a little bit now that he's got a bit of match sharpness and understanding of the team. As for the rest of them, it's fine. Now, given how good Lorient have been this season and we are playing at their place, I I'm not expecting a win, really. But I do want to see a positive performance. We had the same expectations when we played Lens. We drew 1-1 with them. They're now in third place, actually. So they've gone from strength to strength since we drew with them. Also, I'm going to let you into a little secret. This video is late today. And you're obviously aware of that, maybe, if you're looking out for it at the usual time. The reason it's late is because I thought today was Sunday. It's actually Monday. 
Oh, we've scored a goal while I was whispering to you as well. That's okay. Uh, so the time right now, the time right now is uh, is twenty past four on a uh, on a Monday, and this is meant to be out in fifty five minutes. Obviously, it doesn't come out at the normal time. I do apologise, but you know, sometimes things don't work out the way they're meant to. Hopefully, we can use this attack to get ourselves back in front. As uh, oh, Belich, I thought it scored another goal there. Hopefully in the second half, we do find the advantage that we need to give us the lead. Now, there's a few players on the pitch who aren't playing amazingly. Brea Moreno, Navarro, Belic and Gonzalo Estevez. All of them probably should come off in the next 10 minutes or so. So maybe we'll start early, actually, and just see what Divine can do. He's not been playing well this season at all. Belic yellow carded. Let's bring... Uh, who do we bring on? Florian Tardew, on you come. And then I think Appiah comes on at right back. If we can hold on for a draw, I think this would actually be a very positive result given how well Lorien have done this season. It would also take his eight points clear of Montpellier in the relegation zone. Only six points clear of uh, the relegation playoffs. But Koba's just got a goal from a free kick. Now, if we can end up winning this game, my word, what a coup. Although there is a highlight straight from the kickoff. So let's not get ourselves too excited here because I'm sure they'll score a goal off this now. And that would upset me as uh, Ronaldo gives the ball to the other side of the pitch. They get into our penalty area and score immediately. As I say, a draw would be amazing. So maybe after all of that, we are going to end up with a draw here, which is fine. You know, we'll take the draw. We we said at the start we weren't expecting to win this game. So actually, I, I, I'll go back again. An away draw to Lorien, who are fifth in the table, sixth in the table, superb. Puts us in 12th place, a very healthy position. I think we are turning a corner here. Now, if we can just try and resolve something with Dylan, that would be wonderful. But I don't think we will. And given Vallejo's now in the team, he has been replaced. And so by the time we come back next time for like Lille, Ren, PSG, Nice sort of games, which are going to be so, so tough, he may well have become a completely unknown man.